Broadcasting from the basement of La Penta, it's WICR. You've got to figure out what you believe, and more importantly, you have to figure out why you believe it. My name is Joe Archino, and I think to anyone listening to this, I think this is a segment that could help you try to figure out what those the answer to those questions are. And I'll repeat them again if it kind of caught you off guard in the beginning. You've got to figure out what you believe, and more importantly, you have to figure out why you believe it. And I've talked to a lot of people who've come right out of college and right now are kind of in that that next stage of their life where their real life is beginning. You know, maybe they're seeking employment still after graduation or they found something. Maybe they're not happy with what they're doing yet. They're uncertain about the future. And I think all those things are normal feelings to have. I myself in that same boat coming right out of that, that window kind of. But I think... We all sometimes have to kind of take a step back and just reflect and think. I think sometimes as soon as graduation starts, all people could think about is what's next, what's next, how do I get my foot right in the door, and they don't take the time they need to really think about things, to really think about their journey, their path, and I think the two biggest things that sometimes we're so rushing so much in life that we don't answer those questions or we don't really know what those answers to ourselves would be. And so I think everyone needs to take that time to answer those things. What do you believe and why do you believe it? And I, that could really be anything in life, no matter what field you want to go into, no matter what your purpose in this life is. Everyone will have a different answer and different reasons behind what they do and what they believe. But I think more than anything, when you do take the time to find the answers to those questions, you really find your true self. And I I think this all, to me, comes after I listen to just an incredibly well-thought and just very well-reasoned speech by Trey Gowdy, who represents the 4th District of South Carolina, a U.S. congressman. And to me, he gave a 12-minute speech in front of a room of college students really recently, which kind of addresses what the current situation of our country is. And so many people being cynical about our government and cynical about the way that we're divided now more than ever. And I think his message was the truth. And sometimes the truth isn't something that people want to hear, but the truth is what needs to be to be heard. And of course, more than anything, if you don't like it, you have to change it. And I think, again, that kind of plays into that beginning thing I kind of talked about. You've got to figure out what you believe and more importantly, why you believe it. And he talked about during his speech about why it's just not enough to tell people what you believe. You need to tell people why you believe in that thing. And I think you see now with election season kind of coming up, everyone's got a political opinion. Everyone is very is very worried about the direction of the country. So this election means so much to people. And, of course, with the polarizing figures that we have in Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump, well, that just kind of ups the ante even more. And with the dislike uh, with both things, and again, I'm, I'm not advocating either one on this program right now because I don't think either one is fit to be president of the United States, to be quite honest. Both of them have dirty laundry. Both of them have done a lot of things wrong. And both of them do not have what it takes to lead this great country. But I think more than anything... The future of the country is is not bleak. It is not unclear. It can get better. But what it takes is the new generation, the current generation, the way we are going to continue to, to build ourselves and build our futures that will make sure that this country gets back on track. And it, is, it has not been the easiest ride in the world. I think you go back the last 10 years, there's been mounting pressure, mounting d- d- uh, unhappiness, mounting uncertainty. But again, those things can all get back on track. And I think every single one of us has a role to play in that future. But that future can't be realized until we ask ourselves that question. What do we believe in and why do we believe it? And I don't think that we should 
go jump down people's throats automatically if they have a different opinion, one that differs from our own. And again, I think Gowdy Dowdy kind of talked about this and really said it so well. And you know, you're not going to get people to change their mind by insulting them. You're just not. And I think there's a lot of different ways that we could have rational conversations with each other. But insulting each other is just not in a, Again, you go back to this political thing. People have such heavy opinions. And then people are insulting each other left and right if they defer on political opinions and things. And I just, I've never thought that that's the rational approach. Because again, and, and Gowdy talked about this, you know, it makes you more dogmatic in your approach when someone jumps down your throat, tells you you're wrong, tells you all these things, calls you all these names, you're going to be more dogmatic in your belief when people persecute you that heavily for believing what you believe in. And that's really what we're all about, is having that ability to believe whatever you want to believe, as long as it's, you know, within a certain confine, of course. But it's with anything in life, and I think any rational, reasonable person understands that. But to me, more than anything... I really believe that we do need a new wave of people who put the country first and do what it takes to get the country back on track. And it's it's a sad state that our politics have become because people have stopped doing what's best for the country and always are looking to advance their own personal interests. And to me, the reason why that's so sad is because when you look at our history, what we've been built on, it's never been because people had an ego it's never been because people were looking to improve their own situation it's because people understood that the country represented something bigger than themselves from the founding fathers on the belief was always that it was going to take a lot of sacrifice it was going to take a lot to build this thing and to build this dream this idea and it wasn't going to come easy and it never has nothing good in life ever does come easy but Everyone was always willing to pay those sacrifices. Everyone was always willing to do what it took because in the grand scheme of things, this idea, this America, was worth sacrificing for. And I think to me, that's why I've always believed that the armed forces have been the backbone of this country because no one understands sacrifice more than our armed forces. And I think very, I think really... No one goes into the armed force. Maybe not no one. There certainly are cases. But I think for the vast majority of people who join the United States military, whatever the branch it is, they join because they understand the word sacrifice. And not a lot of people understand, truly understand in their heart, what that word means. It doesn't always mean with a gun because there's so many different ways to serve the country in whatever capacity it is. But there are many ways to help this country. But to me, I've always felt that the military is the backbone and has catapulted us to where we are now. That's why I think sometimes when you talk to military people, they're the ones with the most realistic view of America and the ones who understand those things. What do you believe in and why do you believe it? And I think that word sacrifice is one of the biggest ones of all. You're giving a little bit of a part of yourself up because you believe in the whole thing of America and what it represents in the direction that it needs to go in. Now, again, I kind of go back and I digress a little bit from talking about college students coming right out of school, looking for what's next. But again, I do think it is very important for you just to, to sit in silence for a little bit and just think that's all I'm asking you to do, and I think that's all you need to do is just sit there and think, what can I do to make the world a better place? And maybe that that's not, you know, maybe you're just right now focused on your world, and I think sometimes we do need to look at ourselves first before we can look to improve the world. But with that being said, there is no reason why your world can't be the world and why you can't make your world a better place for the rest of the world. And I think the answer to those questions aren't always clear, but they can become clear if you give yourself the time to answer them. And I find myself, you know, in that certain similar circumstance where I needed that time to look at things and to really, really dig down deep and think about 
what do I believe in, and why do I believe it? Am I in the path that will allow me to fulfill what I believe and why, most importantly, I believe it? And for a little, for a time, I didn't think necessarily that I was going down that path. And here's the beautiful thing about life, people. It's never too late. It's just not you wake up every single day and you can start over. You can start a new path. You could join something new. You could start a new project. You could open up a new door. Every single day, there is time. Time isn't always there on our side, and time certainly does have its constraints, and it can run out. But in a situation like this, coming right out of school for anyone, you have time to think things over and ask yourselves the important questions. What do I believe And why do I believe it? I think once you know what those things are, the rest will fill into place. You will find how to achieve those things, how to live your life the way you want to. And I go back to Gaudi for a minute because the way he ended this 12-minute speech, which to me really just opened everything up, and I think the timing of it for me was perfect and exactly what I needed given when I, I heard it. And he said, live out what you profess to believe. And I think once you know the answers to the questions of what do you believe and why you believe it, you will be able to live out what you profess. Because again, it once it's that clear to you, you will start to explore the avenues that allow those things to become a reality. And all I ask is that you just sit down and you think about things, about the path about what your place is in this world, because we all have a place in this world. Don't ever confuse that. Don't ever think that one of us doesn't have a place in this world, because we all do. People have sacrificed too much for us not to, but it's up to you to find out what your purpose is for being here, why that sacrifice was made so that you can contribute and make a difference in this world. But that is going to do it for this segment. Joe Archino here, everyone. If you want to hear more of my thoughts, go to Twitter at Joe Archino, or you can follow me on Instagram, Jersey underscore Joe underscore Archino, and I'll see everybody in the next episode.